Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, in this one we're going to be looking at spellcasting NPCs. Uh, this comes up reasonably frequently on the forums and on Discord, so I thought it would be uh, worthwhile having a look at how the spellcasting uh, trait in NPCs works and how you can create your own or edit an existing one. So let's have a look at some spellcasting NPCs. We've got a couple here from the Monster Manual. We've got the Acolyte here. And we can see the spellcasting uh, trait. Uh, we've got some information about the spellcaster level. We've got uh, details of the ability score that the NPC uses. And then we've got a list of the spells uh, that the NPC has uh, prepared. Uh, now, it's important uh, when you're creating your own that you keep the exact same format uh, as this. The, uh, we need a trait. It needs to be called spellcasting. Um, this line here is essential. You need its spellcasting ability is whatever. Um, the ability has to be exactly like that with a capitalized first letter. And the spells need to be listed um, on a different line for each level of spell. Cantrips need to have at will in brackets. It needs to finish in a colon. And then the spells are listed all in lowercase, uh, separated by a comma. For spell levels, we need the slots in brackets. Um, again, we need to finish that with a colon and then a list of spells, uh, all in lowercase, separated by a comma. Um, so I'll show you first of all how the uh, spells actually get populated into NPC. If we scroll down here, we can see that the Acolyte already has their spells uh, all uh, listed on their uh, sheet. Uh, but if we uh, unlock this NPC and we go into the spells, and we delete all of these spells from the NPC sheet so that they no longer have any spells uh, showing. Um, if we now close this sheet and then reopen it, uh, we'll see that the spells have repopulated. And this is because when a character uh, or when an NPC is opened uh, like this, uh, Fantasy Grounds uh, reads this trait uh, it then looks for the spells and then tries to find those spells in any modules which you have open in the uh, campaign and then it populates those spells that it can find uh, on the NPC sheet. So in this case we've got the player's handbook open and all of these spells come from the player's handbook so it's managed to find all the spells and it's populated them uh, in the sheet. Uh, so essentially uh, if you've got an NPC and you've got these lists of spells. Um, if you've got uh, modules from where these spells come from, then these need to be opened in the um, uh, campaign for the spell casting to actually uh, populate the uh, proper spells in the NPC sheet. So that's the first thing that you've got to be aware of, is that that's how the uh, sheets get uh, worked. Um, this also happens if the uh, NPC is added to the combat tracker. So if we once again delete all of these, close this off, if we open up our combat tracker um, and just uh, grab our NPC and add it to the combat tracker and open up the offensive thing, you can see that the spells have all listed here as well along with all their various actions. So, the spellcasting trait uh, is looked at when Fantasy Grounds uh, opens up the sheet uh, for the first time, uh, or if the NPC is dragged into the combat tracker. So, it's important that you realise that's how uh, that system works. Uh, so, let's uh, now look at uh, editing an existing NPC spell list. Um, We've got our Acolyte here. Now, supposing we decided that instead of the first level spell Sanctuary, we wanted to give this NPC the spell Guiding Bolt. Um, so we do this, we unlock the NPC so that we can edit. Uh, just delete the Sanctuary and add in the spell Guiding Bolt. Again, all in lowercase, spelt exactly as it would be in the uh, Player's Handbook. Um, now we can see that if we uh, scroll down here that 
the NPC still has sanctuary listed and even if we close this and then reopen it it's still got a sanctuary down here uh, listed um, and this is because this only populates if the there is no spells in the spell list so in order to uh, achieve what we want here we need to first of all uh, delete all the existing spells and then when we close and reopen the sheet that forces uh, the spells to reload and if we scroll down here now we can see that we've got guiding bolt instead of sanctuary so this is the next important thing that you need to uh, remember is that if you edit the spell casting trait if you edit the spells list then you need to delete any existing spells and uh, op reopen the sheet close and reopen the sheet so that the spells uh, can be populated so the next thing we want to look at is the other parts of the automation that Fantasy Grounds does uh, for spell casting traits. If we drag our NPC onto the combat tracker and open up the offence, uh, we can see here, uh, if we look at Sacred Flame for example, um, it's saying that the saving throw required here is uh, a DC 12 saving throw, a dexterity DC 12 saving throw. Now if we have a look at the uh, Sacred Flame spell, it just simply says must succeed on a dexterity saving throw. It's not telling us there what the actual DC is. So this value here, the DC 12, is actually being worked out by Fantasy Grounds when the NPC is dropped onto the combat tracker. And uh, what it does is it looks at the uh, ability uh, that we've got uh, here for the spellcasting trait. Um, it looks at the uh, bonus that the uh, NPC has for that trait and it has the level of the NPC and what the, uh, the proficiency bonus would be. So in this case it's working out that we've got 8 which is the base plus 2 for the uh, ability and plus 2 for the uh, proficiency bonus. So we're getting a total of 12. So Fantasy Grounds is doing this calculation automatically. If we have a look down uh, at the Cure Wounds uh, spell, if we have a look at that, it says that you get to Cure 1d8 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. So Fantasy Grounds has worked that out as well. It's added in the plus 2 for the Wisdom ability modifier. And finally, if we have a look at the Guiding Bolt, we see that we've got a ranged attack here of plus 4. And if we look at a uh, guiding bolt, it doesn't tell us anything about the plus four there. It just says make a ranged spell attack. Fancy Grounds has calculated this plus four. So when the uh, NPC is dragged onto the combat tracker, uh, all these values for the saving throws, for attacks, and for heals, and that kind of thing are all automatically worked out. And in addition to that, um, the spell slots uh, from the uh, uh, spellcasting trait here, first level three slots, are also added into this row uh, of uh, boxes here telling you how much spell slots the NPC has. So all of this is worked out automatically when the NPC is placed on the combat tracker. So if we wanted to make this NPC maybe a little bit more powerful, um, we could simply uh, adjust the wisdom here. So let's adjust the wisdom from 14 to 18. We can see now that the uh, bonus is plus four. If we uh, remove the NPC and re-add it uh, and have a look, we can see now that the uh, saving throws, the heals, and the attacks have all been recalculated with the new uh, wisdom modifier taken into consideration. So we've gone from 12 to 14, we've got uh, plus four instead of plus two, and we've gone from uh, plus four attack to plus six. So all of that has been worked out uh, automatically. So simply uh, adjusting the uh, ability score that's required and then replacing the NPC will automatically recalculate uh, whatever the uh, bonuses are. Um, now suppose that we uh, didn't want this uh, calculation to be automatic. Supposing, for example, um, this character has some kind of magic item which allows it to um, have a plus one bonus to its attack rolls and save uh, DCs for spells. Uh, we can do that as well if we uh, unlock uh, the NPC again and then 
in this particular section here uh, we need to add uh, some text to tell Fantasy Grounds that we want to override the automatic calculation and I'm just going to copy this uh, in here so what we're doing here is we're going to give this NPC a plus one to their attack rolls and a plus one to the saving throw so we know that uh, currently their dexterity save is, 50, is 14 we want to make that 15 so we're telling Fantasy Grounds what it is and the uh, spell attack is currently plus 6 we want it to be plus 7 because they've got a plus 1 from whatever magic item it is they, they have so this um, little bit here must follow the uh, spell casting ability is whatever uh, and then end brackets plus 7 to hit with spell attacks spell save DC uh, and a value um, so this wording must be followed precisely uh, if we uh, now delete the NPC from the combat tracker and re-add and have a look we can see now that the spell save the dexterity saving throw is now gone to 15 and the guiding bolt attack is now plus 7 instead of plus 6 so that's how you would o override um, the automatic calculation of uh, the uh, saving throws and the attack bonuses uh, two spells from a particular uh, NPC uh, now all of these things uh, apply similarly to uh, spell casters who are uh, who have the innate spell casting ability um, if we have a look at let's say a drow we can see that the drow has the innate spell casting ability and the wording here is pretty much the same um, and the format of the uh, trait is pretty much the same as well uh, instead of uh, calling it spellcasting it's called innate spellcasting we need to know what the ability score is uh, and then we need to uh, add in the spells again uh, each level of spells in a different line um, and we can see here that the cantrips are just at will and we've got the name of the spell and then we've got one a day each uh, and we've got two spells listed separated by a comma again all in lowercase and spelt exactly the same as they would be in the player's handbook or whatever source um, the spell comes from and all of what we've learned uh, with regard to the spell casting ability also applies to any spell casting so if we wanted to uh, adjust or uh, edit uh, these spell lists um, we would unlock the character we'd make the amendment we'd delete the existing innate spells uh, and then we would close and reopen the spells the character sheet uh, to repopulate the spells and the same thing would also apply if we wanted to change the uh, spell save DC we would simply uh, add that in to the uh, charisma put in brackets and we would just use the same wording as we would use uh, if it were the spell casting trait uh, so I think that's uh, pretty much it uh, for this video uh, the main things to take away is that if you edit spells then you need to delete any existing spells the spell casting trait itself uh, must have a similar wording or exactly the same wording actually um, that we have uh, in uh, our acolyte here we need to have the ability modifier uh, and we need to have the spells listed uh, each in a separate line we need to have the at will the colons the slots the levels and we need to have the spells separated by a comma all in lowercase and spelt exactly the same as they would be in whatever source uh, you're looking for that's the main things to take away from here otherwise uh, fairly straightforward really um, so thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.